Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have spoken to Monica before. She is a pianist. She has many cool projects. Let's ask her a little bit more about how is she practicing? How is she performing? Many great questions. And what is the color of her lipstick? Thank you, Monica, for having us again and being part of your journey. I think those parallels are so significant. You perform, you want to give joy to others in sports. It would be the same. We also perform because we like to do it, but we also, when we sometimes we're part of a team, you want to work with the team. And I do a lot of leadership development, so it's about leading the team And sometimes when you're an individual contributor, like you are, when you're alone on the stage, I always say you need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. To yes. Sum up, I'm wondering what did the sports coach tell you when you said you were exhausted on the second or third day? What was the secret they were telling you? I think she didn't say any, anything spectacular. She just said it, that it is completely normal. And keep going. And this is, you have to feel like that because this is the third day and your body will, your body will adopt. And that was true. On the fourth day, I felt that it's effortless. <laughs> Again, my, my energy level kind of went down and the difficult part became like ordinary. It's a little bit like what you said, just be patient enough to stay in the discomfort Because it, the discomfort will become comfort at some point. Or oh, there is this Hungarian so, psychologist, uh, Michael Csikszentmihalyi, I hope I pronounced that correctly, when he talks about flow. The first, second and third day is hard work. And then you don't have to think so much anymore because you're in flow. It's second nature and it's ingrained in you. And I like what your sports coach said, like, don't give up. It's normal and keep doing what you've been doing. Yes. And also she always stretches the, the importance of rest because I think especially as far as I know in the athletes world, there is many athletes are burning out. And yeah. I think this is the same happening with music as well because we don't give uh, ourselves breaks. We really, we want to push ourselves until the last minute. And uh, what she always said, Actually, the real growth and the real improvement happens when you rest. And uh, what today happened for me as well, because I am now I'm now preparing for some concerts in Lithuania. I will play the first one on Sunday. I have four very big, real classical, big recitals. And I felt really, really tired physically. But mentally, I said to myself, no, but I have to keep practicing because the concerts are coming up. I, I cannot take this rest. But my body is saying, Monica, it's time. It's time. It's, it's, you are ready. You are ready. Like, and, and still, my, bo my brain was not really listening to my, I, I could say, it's sixth sense, I guess. I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I talked to her today and she said that this is really important to listen to your body and not to practice because... You are just satisfying your dumb brain need to keep practicing, even, even though your body tells you that you are ready. That's enough. Go and rest. It's the same as that Dalai Lama says, if you have a busy day ahead of you, you need to meditate more. So it's the same concept. You need to rest. Basically, two weeks before the race, you need to rest. And that's when the nerves come up and you're like, I need to train. I need to train. You go crazy but you need to rest. You want to be rested for when the day comes 
when the marathon day is here and for you when that Sunday comes and you want to perform at the very top level. Mm -hmm. I'll think about that. <laughs> Then tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, I need to rest. <laughs> yeah. How many hours per day do you typically play and rehearse? I would say four. I would say four, but uh, it varies. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's two. But it's very different because when you practice alone, it's one concentration. Maybe you don't get as tired. But when you, for example, now in Lithuania, I will be playing with the violin and cello as a trio. Mm -hmm. And to rehearse with other people is really exhausting because you have to constantly listening what other people do and like teamwork and who is leading, what is happening. So basically you, you have to deal with a lot of information and that is really tiring. And if I do that for four hours, I just can't practice anymore. It's hard to say because those four hours is only playing, but then you still keep thinking about those pieces. So maybe extra, extra one hour. <laughs> And that's important. When I talk about leadership, it's about you're on for four hours, but you still think about it. You internalize it. And again, that's like be comfortable being uncomfortable and rehearse it until everything is second nature. Wow. Yes, yes. But I guess with music, it's almost like it, it is never second in nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, okay. uh, yes, I think, and especially with piano, if we talk like about this extremely high professional level, that there is so, the material is so complex that it's like <laughs> you are forbidden to be a perfectionist. And if you are... <laughs> you are living a difficult life because there is so much material which can, you know, go wrong and you just can't control it. You just have to let it go and let the flow do it for you, you know? No, don't be a perfectionist. Be in the flow. And I also think each day is different, right? Each day you're different. Each season is different. And each location probably is also different. And the audience is also different. How much do you feed from the audience? That's a very good question. I think that's where the coaching should come in. And as musicians, we very much concentrate on our craft, but we very rarely think about the bigger picture as an audience in the, in the room. And, and I think why we might feel a little bit uncomfortable because we go in on stage without having that sensation that we are together with the audience and we have this kind of bubble of energy around us and uh, what i think this is uh, this comes from uh, actors training like getting this personal space which is safe space where no one can actually do any harm for you and when you don't have it you really feel naked and vulnerable I knew about this technique before, but uh, recently I found out about this um, creating space around you where you actually feel comfortable. I'm still developing the relationship with the audience. I'm trying to convert it into more positive, positive side. Again, it's just mental tricks. The way, the way you see it, the, the way you feel it. So I'm trying to convert it into more positive and more, more open feeling when I'm in front of the audience. And what will you wear when you perform? Does it depend on the piece? Uh, yeah, so actually these concerts in Lithuania will be more traditional uh, classical music repertoire. I will probably wear some beautiful gowns, <laughs> some beautiful dresses. But what we did with Anna, again, you can see in the website. And uh, on the October 8th, we are uh, publishing the documentary with the whole performance in the museum. And we were wearing these clothes, which were designed and made by a very famous Lithuanian designer, Juaza Starkavičius. And we just, because the idea was that we're going to perform in the contemporary setting, setting, and we really didn't know what to wear <laughs> because any classical dresses really doesn't go. And then we contacted him and he was really really happy to help and we were wearing these very weird crowns and these yeah. men shirts 
a white shirt and we looked a little bit like, like I say like aces clothes actually I don't know I, I wanted to say protected us but in a way it gave us a character which helped us stop thinking so much about our egos as performance and therefore it actually helped us to feel much stronger I don't know I, I, I think that clothing might actually influence a lot how you feel on stage and I think this is for example what Yuja Wang does a Chinese now American pianist and she dresses the way in, in, in those clothes I think that she actually feels very comfortable and confident and this is why she dresses like she dresses do you own all those dresses? I mean, like for the video, I saw the cool head pieces, but when you perform somewhere, do you own all the dresses or they provide you with some cool dresses? No, no, I own, I own. Well, I, 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 I don't perform so much to be, to change those dresses every time. So I have uh, so, so beautiful, so many beautiful dresses that I just want to keep wearing them in <laughs> concerts. <laughs> I have another question. I wrote a book, Lipstick Leadership. What lipstick do you put on? Because that's important. People need to see you. Yeah? <laughs> what about the makeup? It was also very interesting with that project in the Contemporary Art Museum that we had a nude makeup, which looked like we are not really wearing any makeup, but we were wearing a lot of makeup and our hair was straightened and everything made sense. But it depends uh, from my mood. <laughs> if I want to be, if I want to feel more secure, I might choose something less. If I want to show off, I will choose something more. It depends on the day. And do you do your own makeup or you have a makeup artist helping you? Uh, for that project contemporary in Mo Museum, we had an artist. She would come every day and she would do our hair and, and the makeup. I'm quite good at doing the makeup uh, for myself. I'm happy. I don't need to, anyone to do it for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Monica. This is so inspiring. And I feel like I learned so much. Maybe one day we can be in the audience when you are performing. Keep us updated on what's happening. And all the information is in the show notes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monica. Great insights. Good luck with everything. And hopefully one day we can see you live and enjoy your beautiful music. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Don't miss out. You can hear from great people like Monica, like trainers, authors, athletes. Anybody can be on the podcast. Take it from the Iron Woman is also a book. Download it on Apple Books, on Amazon, or get a real copy. Take it from the Iron Woman, global business coaching with sports parallels. See you next time. Thank you for your support and your followership.